Hi, hello, welcome to Be an Enigma, and today it's Quarantine Reads 2. I know I went straight to the point and normally I don't. The thing is, we don't have time to lose. No one expected quarantine to go this long, no one expected our president to be so stupid, but he was, and it is, and I keep reading a lot each time more. And uh, what happened one of these days is that I beat my record for most books read in a year, which was 45, and so I wanted to share that with you and share the books that I did read. Most of them are already on my Twitter, I have a thread there with everything that I have been reading. Let's get to it because there's a lot of them and I don't want to waste your time. The first series that I read soon after you left me was the Wicked Lovely series. It's like a fairy series. I hate it. I hate every second of this. I hate the main character. I hate all of the love interests. I hate the secondary characters. The second book is about a secondary character and the fourth book is also about a secondary character. I only read these three because I already had them standing around. I got the ebook for the fourth one but I ended up not reading it because I really didn't feel like it. This author has a thing of like, all of her girls are not like other girls. They like pool and they don't like makeup and stuff. They like motorcycles and tattoos and piercings they're so different i didn't like that i felt like this was very 2010 it just brought me back to this toxic view of like seeing other women as com competition like this guy chooses them and if they accept to be with him they go through a test and if they're good they're gonna be like his wife forever and if they don't succeed they're gonna be like his concubines forever if they don't decide anything they die so like it's all on the man and it's a terrible man <laughs> he's like a really bad person and I thought he was gonna get better on the other books so I kept reading and he kept doing the same mistakes and things were like things would happen so fast that I, I didn't even know why some plot points were there I'm talking way too much on the first book, but it's because I hate this one with a passion. I do not like these. I gave them a two just because like they were okay written. Uh, there wasn't something like inherently wrong with the writing. It was just bad for me. I didn't like any of it, um, but someone might, so I gave it a two star. Uh, if you want to know more about any of these books, I've been posting specific reviews of them on my Instagram, being underscore enigma. You should totally check it out, but let's go to the next one. The next one is the 39 Clues series by Rick Riordan and a bunch of other authors such as Gordon Corman, Peter Lorenz, Jude Watson, Patrick Carmen, Linda Sue Park, and Margaret Peterson Haddix. I really, really like this series. I borrowed this from a friend in 8th grade and I still haven't gotten it back to her because I thought they were mine. They were here so long that I thought, oh, maybe I bought them or something. And so I, I was going to read them uh, this year and I looked and it had my name on it and I was like, wait, this is not my handwriting and that's when I found out that the, these were actually my friends. Luckily we're still friends so I called her I was like, hey, I, I have your books and she was like, oh, great. The tale aside, this was really good. This kind of reminded me why middle grade is so great and why middle grade is so important. I would have loved to read, some, to read something like this that was smart and didn't talk down to me. It's a lot like a series of unfortunate events at a certain point. It reminded me a little bit of how Percy Jackson used to be. It's, it explains a lot of things about geography and history and stuff like that, but also doesn't talk down to you. And it's smart, and sometimes I was even surprised by some of the things. And this is something that I feel like we lack a lot in, in Brazilian literature market. I feel like the books that are targeted to kids, they're very stupid, they're very silly. We talk down a lot on our kids, and I, I feel like that's not fair. Uh, it tells the story of Dan and Amy. They are they are two orphans, and they go into like this mad uh, hunt for a big treasure that will make them powerful beyond belief. And there there are other people related to them who are also running uh, after this treasure. And it's super fun. It's super nice. 
if you have someone younger, I would recommend it. If you like middle grade, I would super recommend it. And it just reminds me how great middle grade is and for me to never like lose sight. Like this was who I was when I started writing. So yeah, I really like this one. I gave it a four stars, I think. Okay, next one. It's one of the only ones that is not a series. It's Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. I really liked the show Welcome to Night Vale and I was a little disappointed with this book because it wasn't specifically about Cecil and Carlos, which was what I would expect and what I would have wanted. They are pretty present in this book. The thing is, Welcome to Night Vale was thought of to be like a radio show, to be a podcast, and I don't think it fits this uh, format very well because you have to explain a lot of things that you're seeing, that you're feeling, that you're listening. They did it pretty well. Uh, they kind of reminded me of Lemony Snicket in, in certain parts, the way that they would describe it, the way that they would play with what this medium has that the podcast wouldn't have. But at the same time, it kind of solidified an idea that I kind of was feeling it when I stopped listening to, to Welcome to Night Vale that made me like, it gets kind of tiresome after a while how nothing makes sense and like these people content themselves with living in this weird, weird place. I think I gave it a three star just because I like the characters. The story is about Diane who is struggling to connect with her son who is a shapeshifter. Eventually he goes missing. There's also Jackie uh, and she has a thrift shop and she gets given a paper who won't lift, leave her hand and so they have to join forces to fix this mystery and bring Diane's son back. Yeah, so three stars because it was good, it was okay, it was a book. It just, um, I don't think Night Vale works for this format for me. Next, you already know, you already heard, I have a whole video on this book, and it's Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I don't wanna touch it, I don't wanna talk about it. If you want to hear about it, just click the i card, it's gonna be there, the video. I don't like it at all, I gave it a two star. Uh, the next one is Fangirl by Ray Morrell. I heard about the Rainbow Row contro controversy once I joined book two, but I already had this lying around. It was a dear friend who gave it to me, and I was curious for a long time to read it, so I thought, hey, I'll give it a try, but I'll keep my eyes open to see if I see anything. When I was starting it, like, since I knew this, like, at the first time, I was like, whoa, she talks a lot about being a white person for a white person. Like, normally, uh, when you're a white person, you don't, like, talk about other white people doing white people stuff. But she does. In the beginning, I was like, mmm. But then, like, it, it was just at the beginning, and then it got over it. I didn't expect to like this book as much as I have. I don't know... Like, something hit really, really close to home for me. I used to write fan fiction, as a lot of us have. Uh, I had a very, like, good memories with fan fiction, and I had discussions such as the ones she has with her professors once she joins, like, literature and writing classes. But I, I don't even think it was the the fanfic writing i think it was like how the romance was conceived and how like mature the things were and how it's very like new adult what was done here this thing of like leaving home and finding your own identity and trying to hold on to people who sometimes won't don't want to hold on to you it's just like all of these changes happening at the same time um i feel like and this is something that I also felt in, in attachments that I read later. I feel like Rainbow Rowell is a very honest writer. I feel like everything that she does comes from the heart, comes from a place of a uh, very big humanity. Anyway, I really like this book. I gave it a five star. I think it's one of the only five stars you're gonna find in here, in this big pile. Next one! Okay, so uh, continue on, on the line of books that are controversial, but that I bought a long time ago. Most of these books I bought a long time ago. Uh, the Help by Catherine Stockett. I really liked the movie. I hadn't read the book. I really liked the book. I feel like it um, expands on some things that I was curious on uh, because of the movie. If you like the movie, I feel like it's nice that you read the book. But I feel like the book leaves an even bigger, bitter taste in your mouth 
because it shows that like um, in the movie it kind of gets implied that Abelene writes uh, her chapters and then um, the girl Skeeter kind of like fixes them but here you can see that she practically does anything and the chapters are like full Abelene and the anonymous takes the credit but she but uh, Skeeter puts it on her resume so like it just feels kind of more dirty more white savior I don't know I feel like it is a good book, it is interesting, uh, since I am Brazilian I know nothing about the segregation period and it's nice for some things like to show me. I do think it's White Savior, I do think um, she didn't do much to empower uh, the, the people that she, she interviewed. She gave them money, but then when everything got hard she went away and she tries to justify this because all of the mates tell her no, you should go, there's nothing for you to hear. But like she could have stayed and she should have stayed. I don't know, I feel like it was irresponsible of her to like use them as a step letter for her career. Uh, I didn't like that and yeah, I gave it a three star just because I, I love and respect the the movie so much and I feel like this responded some some of my stuff but I can't give it like more than that because of the obvious problems that it has. But it was a good book. The the writing is impeccable, it's very nice the way that she weaves the story. Um, yeah, I really like it, it has some problems, I acknowledge it, three stars. Next up, this one very <laughs> near and dear to my heart, since uh, Twilight was coming back and I didn't feel like reading Midnight Sun, uh, I picked up these who were already um, nearby, I had the first three books and so I had to go after the other ones and now I'm reading the fifth one. And it's the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. So far, I like this series a lot. It reminds me a lot of like being 12 uh, and, and happy and excited about vampires. I feel like this is something that would be way on my alley when I was that age. I read Twilight, I read Evernight, I read House of Night series. And I remember a long time ago there was that Infernal series, which was like uh, a compilation of short stories by authors and one of them was by Rochelle Mead and, and it was about the parents of someone I don't remember I think it was Lisa's, Lisa's parents but I have to check but either way I really like it uh, it's about a vampire academy in which vampires go to learn to be vampires or something the kids are mostly there for their own protection because they are bad vampires and then um, there's this these girls and one of them is like a vampire and the other one is like bodyguard there's a lot of complications there's a lot of romance the romance in these three first books is so nice it's like the yearning is so real it's so good um, the fourth book kind of ruins it a little bit and now it's tainted it tainted my memory but I don't know I feel like the the main character Rose is not really learning from her mistakes like as much as I would have hoped for. I haven't finished it yet to give it like a rating, but I was thinking of giving like a four. It's not a five, I don't think I would reread it someday, just because it had some stuff that bothers me, like um, couples breaking up just for like uh, plot points that are unnecessary, a lot of drama, and not to mention that like they are clearly very gay and they're like all the time like, oh, we're not lesbians, oh no. Like, what is the L word? No. Which was a very 2012 thing to do. Uh, this next one. Honestly, I have no words. I have no words to say how much I hate this book. So this is The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Gouge. Um, it has a cover uh, compliment from J.K. Rowling. Which shows how old this, this book is. Uh, and she says, I simply love The Little White Horse. And that says a lot about the book. So this book is about a young girl called Maria. Her parents die and she goes to this place called the Moon Valley that her family owns to live with her uncle. And a lot of things are weird and she mentions fairy all the fairies all the time, magic all the time. And then she saves the valley with the power of Christianity. Like there's this hill that used to be from the church and then some people like destroyed the church and then she went and she gave the hill back to God. And things don't make sense and the author 
outfit describes every single dress, every single garment that they use. They, she describes all of the house. Like from this book, you could easily like draw the house to every detail, and I hate it. She would sometimes spend like two, three pages describing every single inch of a room. I would just skip through it, and even so, it was like. I don't know, 200 pages, it was the hardest 200 pages I ever read in my life. I, do, I don't like to DNF books, but I almost DNF this one. There's a movie that I used to watch, and the movie is so much better, and I admire so much the, the, the makers that made the movie, because they made it into something that I could actually enjoy from this. I remember watching the movie and I thought it was kind of confusing, and that's why I bought the book at the time, because I thought it was gonna shed some light into what I had seen, but it did not. It made me even more confused, nothing is explained. Uh, things just happen, she just walks places and she's like, hey, can we end the feud from our families that lasted like 300 years? And the guy's like, okay, you seem like a good person, so I'm gonna start being bad because you asked me to. I have to say that a lot of books would be much easier if that kind of shit worked. I gave it a one star, I hate it, uh, the writing is awful, it's old, oh, not to mention two 14 year olds get married in the end of it and it's kind of like a happy ending. That was weird, so Little White Horse, don't do it, JK Rowling likes this. This one I was so curious when I bought it and then I forgot about it and it's the Heather Wells mystery series. and. I love this series so much. I didn't expect, I didn't know that the series was called Hadwell's Mysteries. I didn't know it was, if they were mystery books. I just read, oh, she was an old pop star, so it's probably about like her trying to go back into, into her pop star days, but it actually wasn't. It's a lot of mysteries. She works in a dorm, some of the students start to get murdered, and she starts going after the killers. The, these books, they have such a sense of sorority and it's so nice to see, it's so refreshing to read. Uh, in most of these cases, like, the police won't go after, like, the dangerous people because uh, the people who were murdered were girls, um, because they were teenagers, because they were stupid, because... And, and she goes after this because she believes in these people and she knows that they didn't deserve to die the, the way that they did. It is nice to see a fat heroine, uh, and she she's not fat, she's, she wears 42, I wear 42 as well. She's a 12, she's a size 12, I'm a size 12 too. I don't think that uh, that is necessarily fat, but I know that the world sees as such, even though it's like medium body type. I like that it's not about her losing weight. I like that she likes food and she's not apologetic for it, and people don't criticize her on it. I think it is very nice, even though I don't think Meg Kiko is fat, but I feel like she did a great portrayal and I thank her for it. Uh, there are two more books in the series that I got it on ebook and that I read it as well, and I love it. The romance is so nice. I honestly didn't remember my keyboard was so good. I decided that I like chiclet now, which was something that hadn't happened in a long time, and I like it. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it very much. Maybe my taste is changing. Who knows? Uh, so I gave it a five star. I gave this series a 5 star because I love it and one day I want to reread it and feel it again. So the next one is also Meg Kibbutz because as I said I didn't remember that I liked Meg Kibbutz so much and I was finding like a new love and appreciation for Chiclet. So I read She Went All the Way by Meg Kibbutz. It's about this lady who is a screenwriter and she just got dumped by her boyfriend who is a famous actor that was in the movie that she won an Oscar for and she wrote it for him and now that he's famous he left her and so she ends up lost in the middle of Alaska with her like nemesis kind of enemies to lovers kind of thing i don't like enemies to lovers i didn't particularly enjoy their couple very much it was nice it was well written nothing was out of place Meg Cable knows her shit she knows how to write a book she writes a lot. I don't know if you ever like noticed how many books this woman has written, but she has written so much. And I like the book. I gave it a three star. I think it was a book. I think it was good. I think the romance was okay. It did what it came to do. I wouldn't give it a four star just because I don't particularly like it. I, I don't know if it's because I read it soon after. I read Size 12 is not fat because I love that romance so much. And, uh, but it was nice. It was very exciting. I was The stakes were very high. I like it. It's a good book. 
I gave it a three star. It, it it's average. <laughs> Okay, next one, like I said, uh, I read uh, Fangirl, and I also had another book by her lying around, which is uh, Attachments by Rainbow Rattle. I don't know how to feel about this book. I feel like giving it a, tr a three star just because I like it, but the thing is that nothing happens in this entire book. Nothing really happens. Like, the couple will only get together in the last 30 pages. Like, they actually meet face to face. And all of this time, he is reading her online correspondence with her friend. And he knows that this is wrong and he keeps doing it. And, like, it's well, like, developed within the narrative. But it's mostly, like, him reading the emails, him living his life. Which is not exciting, by the way. Nothing happens. And so, it's just, like, kind of this monotony of his life. And you can kind of understand why he would think that reading her emails was so fun, but I thought that at, at a certain point he would start like leaving tips or like start moving towards a relationship, but no, this only happened in the end. It was kind of weird, it was kind of sudden. It was an okay book, I, I, get, I rated it a three. Again, like I said with Fangirl, I, I find her books like so honest. I, uh, sometimes it feels like she has been in the place of some characters, but like she can't be in the place of all of the characters, so we just assume that she's a good writer, and she is. But this is a famous case of like, the concept was better than the execution. I didn't know if I was going to talk about this book in, in the channel because it was so, it was so close to me, it was so nice, it just helped me like see my life differently and it's a book of speculation by Erica Swyler. This book is about coincidences and how families kind of led up to each other, how uh, magic works and um, I don't know, I don't want to talk a lot about it and a lot about what my personal experiences joined me with this book but I just felt like it was written for me and I read it like just at the right time when I need it and I don't know if you ever felt this, like how someone could write something that could end up in your doorstep like by accident, complete accident, and and just feel like it was written with you in mind. It was a story for you. I felt that. I do feel that. I think it's an amazing book. It's a 5 star for sure. If I could, I would give it a 10 star. I would give it a 15 star. I don't know if you're gonna like it as much as I do, but I liked it so much. I feel like it hit all of the nails of like things that I really enjoy in books and I, I, I don't see a lot. The main character of this book is Simon. He's a librarian. He um, receives this book which was bought in a lot of speculation by this book collector. A lot of speculation is a lot in an auction in which you can't look at what's inside, you can only kind of uh, look around and then you buy it but you don't know what's really inside and this book was inside, it was almost ruined by water. Um, and he sent it to this boy, to this man, because it had the name of one of her ancestors inside and so he starts looking into it and he starts finding out that all of his ancestors uh, were drowned almost in the same day they were all women and his sister comes back to town and things start developing from there the um, story also is told with um, in parallel with another story that happened like 300 years ago in a carnival um, with uh, a boy that was left by his family and he ends up in this carnival um, and it's honestly it's amazing how the two things kind of mix together and you find things like in the past and in the future and how these two interlock um, it's simply amazing it's so well done I love it to bits I think one of the interesting things as well is how the book is made I thought it was old uh, but as it turns out I think it was made like this to look like it was uh, kind of made instead of printed and um, like it was cut by hand or it was identified uh, by water. Uh, it's honestly an adorable book. I love it so much and I really can't explain it. I have no words. Um, I know I said a lot of words and then I said I have no words, but like 5 stars, 10 stars, 15 stars, a million stars. It came at the right time and I love it so much. 
Okay, finally, last book of the day. Um, the last book is Hunger Games. I am rereading it. I read it a long time ago. I think it was um, like one or two years after it came out. It was about um, Mockingjay was about to come out. Uh, right now, I'm rereading Catching Fire along with the fifth book in the Vampire Academy series. There's not a lot I can talk about The Hunger Games by this this time. Everyone has seen it, everyone has read it. It's about Katniss. Uh, she's a girl in a dystopian uh, universe. She has to go to these games to kind of uh, try to stay alive and, and get money for her family, and there can only be one standing. I actually surprised myself at how much I still like it and how much of quality it has. Because, like, I've been reading Vampire Academy and the value kind of decreased. Like, you can see clearly that some things don't hold up to this to this day. And, like, you can... Hunger Games super holds up to, to this day. There are some stuff, like, um, some mental health issues that you can see here, but it still holds up to this day. You can say that it was made for an effect, like, to show how these people, like, they were, uh, worried about eating, they wouldn't think about depression or other mental health issues like PTSD that Katniss will have at a certain point. Um, I, I was really surprised, I really like it, and I like it how now as a grown-up I can quit, pay more attention to um, the, like the political parts of The Hunger Games, but also when I was a kid, the romance between Katniss and Peeta kind of felt like it, it came out of nowhere, like he was uh, lying about like looking at her since he was a kid, but now you can clearly see how in love he was even though he wasn't saying it all the time, like sometimes some YA boys are doing it, you can see like it's the actions that he does, is how he takes care of Katniss that kind of leads them to endgame, and that is very nice. And it's so much better to hate Gayo now because you can see how much of a prick he is like since the beginning I when I read it the first time I didn't like Gail very much but I had this thing of like the first boy that shows up has to be the one and I hate him now like I don't think he was helpful at all in the first two books uh, I don't I had I still haven't reread Bunkin' Jay and I'll give you an update. I've been rereading with uh, some friends in a book club and it's been so much fun. It's like being 12 again. Uh, most of these books is, is like that. It's just going back to my love of reading, you know? And this is something that I've felt like I really missed. And even though quarantine sucks, it's nice to get this back. It's nice to live this again. Uh, back when I used to read a lot, it was a very like troubled time of my life. And, but it was a time also in which I wrote a lot, in which I uh, read a lot, and these are things that like shape me into who I am. And it's very nice to go back to it, to feel like that again, to feel excited about stories, about the power of stories, about how they are told. Um, and it also feels nice that now I get to do this, I get to share this experience with you guys. Um, and I don't know, it just feels nice, you know, it just feels like something is about to happen. It just feels like I'm going the right way. And then after this emotional um, whatever it was that just happened here, let's just keep it between us, okay? Well, uh, if you stayed that long, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to hang out or if you want to check out the thread with all of the books that I have been reading, you can follow me on Twitter at bean underscore enigma. I now have an Instagram in which I'm also posting my ratings and some more specific um, like reviews of the books that I'm reading. That's bean underscore enigma as well. You can follow me on Tumblr if you want to know more about my writing and read some writing advice or maybe some writing memes beanenigma.tumblr.com um, If you want to see me make more of a fool of myself, you can go on my TikTok at beanenigma And now that I think I got all of my social media together, I am going to go edit this video and you can go watch another video uh, I'm gonna leave them in the cards, they're gonna be all around you, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be nice Thank you so much 
for watching. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye!